tell you about my grandpa. His name was Luigi Del Bianco, and he was the chief carver on this, the Mount Rushmore National Memorial. My grandpa is part of our American history, and I want to share his special story with you today. We're going back in time to 1936. And my grandpa is going to show you the way Mount Rushmore looked back then. Okay, open your eyes. Isn't that cool? This is the way Mount Rushmore looked when it was still being carved. So let's imagine that my grandpa is studying the model on the head of Abraham Lincoln. He's measuring the eye. And as he measures the eye, my grandpa likes to talk to his favorite president. <coughs> ah, President Lincoln, buongiorno. <laughs> Today we carve the eye. Hey, bambini. Do you know what I say to you? I say to you, then you say to me, bambini. bambini. That means the children in Italian. You see, bambini, in the morning, I measure the eye of Lincoln. But in the afternoon, I carve the eye. See, si, sono io, Luigi, carving the eye of President Lincoln. Do you see the eye, bambini? It's very big, eh? Do you see the nose? Look at the drill that I hold in my hand. I carve with that drill, and that drill is 40 pounds, mamma mia. Mm -hmm. And bambini, when I carve the faces, I have to carve the faces 500 feet in the air. Guarda. 500 feet in the air. I, Luigi, I take this photo. 500 feet on top of the head of President Washington. And bambini, you learn in a very short time the five-part process of how we carve the faces. Tutti pronti? We point, we blast, we drill, <laughs> we honeycomb, and we finish. Yeah! Round of applause, bravissimo, take it down. Mr. Borglum, and he says, Bianco, you must come to the mountain subito. There is a crack of pegmatite stone in the leap of Jefferson, and you must fix it. I trust only you can do this job. Otherwise, the face falls apart again. So what do I do? I get in my car, and I drive for 1,800 miles to South Dakota, and I climb up 500 feet to the leap of Jefferson, and I take out that bad crack, and I put in a new piece of stone, and I point it, and I finish it, and I smooth it, and when I am done, Bambini, you cannot even tell the crack was there. So, I guess you can say, hi Luigi, I saved the face of a Thomas Jefferson. I, I feel like I was transported to South Dakota, and I felt like Lou was his grandpa. And I actually had tears in my eyes, you know, listening to the story because it made me feel like my, my grandfather coming to life. So this really, besides being historical and factual and teaching them so much, just really brought this whole story of Mount Rushmore to life. It was just so inspiring. I really felt like he was Luigi. Bambini, when I was a boy in Italia, I had a dream to come to America to carve something special. Bambini, tell me, my dream, does it come true? Yes. This is my passion, Bambini, to be un artiste. Raise your hand if you have something you love to do, something that you have a passion to do. Bambini, let me ask you, if this thing for you to do, if it is hard, do you give up? No. No, Bambini, you listen to Luigi. You work hard. Give the gift you have. Live your life, la vita bella. 
Bambini, I thank you so much for listening to my story today. I have to get back to work. I think I hear Mr. Borden calling me. I am Luigi Del Bianco. And Bambini, I say to you, and you say to me, Ciao.